Hi, and thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'll show you how I go about making this maker stamp using the Shaper Origin in a lathe. I start the process off by brazing together two pieces of brass, which will provide a secure way to attach the stamp to the wooden handle. I was honored to be chosen first place in the 2024 Shaper Box Challenge. And I've had a few friends ask me what the Shaper Origin is and what it can do. Essentially, it's a handheld CNC router, which is not limited by the size of a traditional CNC machine's gantry or bed. And while the rounded through tenons shown on the serving tray give it away as machine made, and some might argue that it does not constitute fine furniture, I was able to design the joinery using their free online program and then cut the parts out in under an hour. Back to the project, I used the origin itself to create a jig to hold the brass part to start the engraving process, which I accomplished using a V-bit and a 1 8 inch collet taking multiple passes. Shaper has a line of products to use in conjunction with the origin one of which is the Shaper Trace, which is that black frame you see here. It allows you to quickly transfer hand drawings to a cut path on the origin using your smartphone's camera. And obviously when making a stamp, just remember to reverse the image. I also created a little negative space below the initials. Any takers as to what it's for? A tiny bit of sanding on 400 grit removes any tarnish from the silver soldering process and deburs it as well. And with our brass part done, I move on to creating the handle, which is a nice return to traditional woodworking. And this is why I love the hobby so much, as there's so much to learn and it's hard to be good at it all. Just because someone is an expert at cutting dovetails, they could still be a novice when it comes to wood turning. Really a world of its own with different tools, techniques, and language. For me, I find turning on the lathe to be more relaxing and creative, as for the most part, the handle can be shaped however you want. Um, but having said that, the skills required to leave a smooth finish using a skew chisel or spindle gouge is tough to master, but way worth it compared to using carbide scrapers, which results in more tear out which then requires more sanding, and you lose some of the crispness and the details as a result. While the frequency of getting catches has gone down a lot since I started, every once in a while it'll happen, and it will definitely test your sphincter tone. Uh, off camera, I use a coarse file to roughen up the brass stem to ensure a better bond between the epoxy and the handle. I use a scrap piece of wood against the tailstock as a clamp while the epoxy sets. Here I'm um, adding a decorative bead. This style of handle is modeled after the handles that Lee Nielsen used to make for their rasps uh, back a couple of years ago. And my favorite part, applying finish, and it really brings the piece home. And I know this is controversial wearing gloves while using spinny things. Um, and if you think this is dangerous wearing nitrile gloves, uh, let me know in the comments below. And finally, I part the piece off and uh, I do it this way in order to minimize the amount of sanding uh, needed to get rid of the nub. And there you have it. Oh, and that negative space I talked about earlier, it's for writing in the date. My special thanks goes to Ellen for letting me showcase her lovely artwork. I hope you enjoyed this video.